Welcome back to the lab. Welcome back to EE for everyone. Today we're continuing the lithium battery series by wrapping up this design and getting ready for some hardware in the lab. Yes, we have a battery and that battery can be charged. If you're still catching up, make sure to check out that previous video where we discussed battery chemistries, battery cells, and how to safely charge a lithium battery. Please remember that these circuits are dangerous and are in fact a fire hazard, so please do not duplicate what you see here at home unless you are licensed and trained in the design and analysis of these circuits. These designs are meant for educational purposes only and are not ready for sailor use in any country. Right then. So I think it's about time that we talked about what this project is actually for. Why am I building this circuit? Well, it's quite simple. A few projects down the road, we're going to have an awesome LED sign. We haven't made it yet, but trust me, we're getting there and it's going to be awesome. This is eventually going to be a much better version of that little USB adapter board that we made. This little USB adapter board that we made a while back. That circuit in the future will use WS2812 LEDs and those need five volts. Our lithium batteries will vary from about 3 volts to about 4.2. Both of those are less than 5. While 4.2 might be close enough that it might actually work, that's really not a good design. Of course, we can always just adapt a 5 volt input and run that circuit off of a 5 volt input, but if I want to put it on a shelf somewhere where an outlet isn't convenient or accessible, it might be nice to have the option of unplugging that sign and running it from a rechargeable battery. As I thought about this problem, I realized that having a reliable battery-backed 5-volt output is something that might be convenient for our future projects too. And if you look on Amazon, you can find many USB-fed LiPo management and boost converter pairs that do the exact same thing. So I bought one. <laughs> no, this is not a module integration channel. EE for Everyone is a circuit design channel, so we're going to build one ourselves to make something more expensive instead of just spending the $20. That said, just because I love pain doesn't mean that you need to love pain, so I'll put a link to one of these modules down in the description. I think we grabbed one from Adafruit. It, you know, it'll work. With that out of the way and us all on the same page about what we're doing today and what's going on, let's chat about the second part of this circuit. A boost converter. A boost converter works kind of like a buck converter, only completely different. We're still using an inductor and some switches and some capacitors to chop up an input voltage and turn that into a different output voltage with a relatively equal power on the input and output, less any losses. It's just the way we arrange those components and the inductors and the way that we arrange all that allows for the production of a higher output voltage than what we see at the input. Because a boost converter switches that inductor to ground instead of to the output, that means that voltages larger than the input voltage can be produced. Another way to think about that is when switching the inductor in a buck converter, when the output voltage is equal to the input voltage, you can no longer produce current in the inductor because the voltage across it is zero. That means you are no longer able to effectively convert power. So we've implemented a TPS 61023 boost converter regulator. This chip integrates all of the switching elements, the controller, and the gate driver into one convenient package, and might I add, a tiny one. For something this small, and it is truly tiny, we can only expect to get maybe an amp or two when the regulator is really dissipating power. But the peak current can apparently go up to three amps, despite the fact this thing looks like a quarter of a grain of rice. Our design doesn't deviate much from the reference design. Again, you know, we could have leveraged the enable threshold to set a reasonable UVLO or an under voltage lockout, but this design doesn't really consider any under voltage protection. This is the second reason why a protected lithium cell is necessary. Without this protection at the cell, this circuit will over discharge your batteries. It doesn't like latch power. You know, typically I'd like to see a latched power switch where the user pushes it to turn it on and the system turns itself back off. That gives you a maximum for like off state current. But again, we're not shooting for the moon here. Rather, we're demonstrating some principles of power conversion and lithium battery charging to make this little project. If we were designing a product, this would look different. The basic building blocks are the same, but the devil's really in the details. There's an element of analysis that needs to happen for every application.
Well, that's all we've got for today, but if you like this video and you can't wait for more, let me know by getting subscribed, hitting that like button, and leaving a comment down below. I want to give a special thank you to our channel members on Patreon and YouTube. I really appreciate the extra step that you've taken to support us directly. It really helps us a lot. Thank you. Coming up soon, we'll be testing our battery module and kicking off a new project. I can't wait! Most of all, I hope that you learned something great today, and I hope to see you again soon. So thanks for watching it for everyone, and thank you for staying till the end. Bye.